careful out there. Well, meanwhile, New York City Mayor Eric Adams riding high after a presidential visit in which he received the full-throated support of the White House. The blueprint has been outlined, but what kind of action is being taken? That was a theme when the mayor spoke with Mike Marza today. In addition to crime, they discussed police funding, the role of the state, masks in schools, and even vegan Fridays. Let's take a listen. Big day yesterday, President Biden here in town for this high profile public safety summit. So what details did you learn from President Biden about the federal assistance that can help you try to disrupt this iron pipeline, the influx of guns right now to New York? It's so important when you look at uh, the call that I asked of the president after the primary, and he responded to it. Number one, to come here and see how we are combining city, state, and federal agencies to fight this uh, really crisis of guns that are proliferating in our cities. And second, to visit the crisis management team on the ground. He responded to both. The goal is uh, to really use ATF to zero in on those illegal gun dealers and how they are flowing into our cities. And he has, has really uh, stated that he's going to play a major, major role in doing so. Let's talk about locally. What is the status of your anti-gun unit? And when do you expect it to be fully operational on the streets? And what exactly will these officers be doing? That is so important because many of the fears that people uh, had after they heard about um, putting in place the anti-gun unit, they thought about the anti-crime unit of yesteryears. This is not the anti-crime unit. These officers will be in modified police uniforms so they're readily identified in unmarked vehicles, but they're going to do precision policing to go after those five to 600 known trigger pullers that are producing 17% of the violence in the city, although they are less than 1% of the population. And the goal of this unit is to go after those that we know are part of gang behavior illegal actions in the city and really clamp down on them. We heard President Biden speak on this yesterday. How important is it to really remind people of your position and the president's position that it's not about defunding police, it's about other strategies and using the correct terms when we're trying to tackle what we're dealing with here in New York? Uh, that is so important because public safety is not a bumper sticker. It's not about just sending out slogans that will send fear throughout our city. It's about using taxpayers' dollars correctly and make sure that we're deploying police officers to do their job. That is why I am civilianizing my department, not having an over large number of officers who are doing clerical duties and not public safety duties. What, that is what we hired them for. And the message is clear. Also, Congressman Torres, I believe he was right. Uh, this is not a call to defund. This is a call to properly use the funds and give police the support they need to bring back of the public safety that we are, we expect in this city. I want to talk about Albany because it is a multi-pronged approach when we talk about violence in New York. You've called on lawmakers before to re-examine this bail reform, but what conversations have you had with them, and what is the real likelihood that bail reform will be reworked in some way? And, and that's such an important question you're asking. Uh, the role I have to play is use my uh, my reformist. Uh, experience in the police department, formerly abused by police, became a police officer, and as a state lawmaker, uh, I produced my blueprint to end gun violence and other violence in the city. And they are addressing the damming of many rivers that feed the sea of violence. And I need my partners to do the same. I had to show them what areas we had to tweak laws. They have the responsibility to examine that and make the determination, uh, are we going to look at what Eric said? Let's sit down and have a conversation. I, my team is having the conversations with my lawmakers and their staff, and I believe we can come to a middle ground to get the justice we deserve with the safety that we need. That is what's missing in some aspects of these laws. Mr. Mayor, just one more on crime, and I do want to get to a couple of other issues, but when we're sitting here in this city and we hear the display yesterday and all these leaders coming together, the big question that a lot of people have is, how long will this take? What will it take for New Yorkers to feel safe again? We wanted a, an immediate change to the atmosphere. It's, we, you do that in several ways. Number one, 
You show the partnership. You show that we are working uh, together to solve this problem on all levels. And that's what I, when I talk about a 9-11 type response, we came together to stop international terrorism. We must do it to address domestic terror of gun violence. Mr. Mayor, I want to turn to the other crisis. Of course, the pandemic remains. COVID cases appear to be headed in the right direction, which is down. But parents, some parents at least, are asking, when will kids be allowed to shed the mask in schools? What metric has to be met or threshold has to be met? Once we get to a safe place based on the facts and not fear, uh, we're going to tell those parents and children, you could take those masks off, and I'm looking forward to that. No, I know a lot of uh, parents are and kids as well, but what is that safe place? Is there a positivity rate that you're looking at? What are the health experts telling you? It is. It's a combination of positivity uh, rates. It's a combination of hospitalization and how s we're slowing down the spread of this virus. The deadline for some city employees to get vaccinated, the ones who have not, uh, is February 11th. So what happens to those city employees who are not vaccinated by the deadline of the 11th? It's crucial that we follow the rules. We've done a great job of letting people know what is expected of each other. We communicated with unions and others, and it's time for New Yorkers to understand our most potent weapon against the virus, COVID virus, is to be vaccinated and booster shots. And so we have to adhere to uh, what we put out. Will those employees be terminated? Well, they, they're actually not being terminated. They're actually quitting because if the rules of employment is based on you being vaccinated and you determine you're not, uh, that is the decision you're making. It's not a decision that we're making as a city. And so they are quitting on us. And I say don't quit on New York. Uh, take your vaccine and your booster shots. Mr. Mayor, I can't leave you without wishing you a happy Vegan Friday. Uh, New York <laughs> City Public Schools celebrating their first Vegan Friday. I know your journey as a vegan has been well documented. Uh, what are some of the other health changes you hope to bring to New York City Public Schools? Uh, just really uh, both uh, mental and physical. Sometimes we think of education as just being academics, and it's not. It's allowing the development of the full personhood of our children. Our children are in schools more than they are with their parents for the most part. And we want to bring in breathing exercises, meditation, uh, how to do self-care, how to produce um, a qualitative child that they can help even bring home some of their skill sets to their parents and loved ones. One final question, Mr. Mayor, you've only been in office for about five weeks, yet so much has happened. So what keeps you up at night? It seems like you never sleep, but before you get those hours of sleep at night, what keeps you up worried and concerned about the city? Uh, I, I just believe in the city so much. I talk about 9-11, watching those two buildings collapse as a lieutenant in the police department. And, you know, I focus on that and I give uh, honor to those we lost. But 9-12 is a significant day for me. We got up. Teachers taught. Retailers sold goods. Uh, New Yorkers showed America our resiliency. And so I don't stay up worrying about New York because we're resilient. And I know we are going to come back uh, bigger and better and stronger than ever. Uh, this is the greatest city on the globe, and we're going to lead America in the right direction. The way goes New York goes America, and the way goes America goes the globe. So I sleep well because I know I'm in the best city on earth, and that's New York. And as citizens of New York, we wish you well and success. Mayor thank Adams, you. thanks so much for your time.